In this video, I will talk about binomial distribution. So we're still talking about probability distributions, especially the discrete probability distribution. So we're going to talk about binomial, and then in another video, I'll talk about the Poisson. Right now, we'll talk about the binomial, and the binomial meets certain requirements. It has to have a fixed number of observations. For example, 15 tosses of a coin, 10 light bulbs taken from a warehouse. Each observation is classified into one of two mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive categories. So in other words, an example would be head or tail in each toss of a coin, defective or not de uh, defective light bulbs. You can think of it as a failure or a success. Okay, you, you only have two outcomes, failure, success. Um, the probability of being classified as the event of interest, which is the probability, is constant from observation to observation. So an example is if you toss a, a coin, the probability that you get a tail is going to be the same for each toss. You got a 50-50 chance each time you toss a coin. Um, and the value of any observation is independent of the value of, another, of any other observation. So that just means um, one one outcome would not affect the next outcome. For example, when you toss a coin, what you get on the first time does not affect what you get on the second time. So they're independent of each other. So possible applications for a binomial distribution. Um, a manufacturing plant labels items as either defective or acceptable. A firm bidding for contracts will either get a contract or not. A marketing research firm receives survey responses of yes, I will buy, or no, I will not. And new job applicants either accept the offer or reject it. So as you can see, each one of these had two outcomes, okay, success or failure. So this is the formula for binomial distribution. I know it looks very intimidating. I will show you how to do it in StatCrunch as well as Excel. But I will also show you how to do this by hand. So in this problem, well, it's not a problem, but in the formula, um, you see an exclamation point. That's considered a factorial sign. And um, your calculator will have it. I know it's your cell phone calculator actually has it. Uh, it's, a, it's a button that may look something like this. Um, depending on your calculator, you probably have to research on your calculator where to find the button. Okay, so let's go over what these uh, variables mean. Uh, N is the sample size. That's the number of trials or, or observations. X is the number of events of interest in, in the sample. Then you get probability. It looks like a pi sign, but it means probability. That's the probability of, a, of the event of interest. So let's go through a problem. A manufacturing company regularly conducts quality control checks at specified periods on the products it manufactures. Historically, the failure rate for LED light bulbs that the company manufactures is 3%. Suppose a random sample of 10 LED light bulbs is selected. What is the probability that exactly one of the LED light bulbs is defective? Okay, so let's determine whether or not this is a binomial distribution first off. They told you that they picked 10 light bulbs, okay? So N is 10. You got a fixed number of trials, and you're looking at 10 light bulbs, okay? We're trying to see whether or not it's defective or not. So that that's one of the rules of binomial distribution. You have a f failure or success. Um, the probability that the uh, light bulb may, uh, is defective, has a failure rate, is 0 0.03. They said it was 3%. Also, each one of these light bulbs are independent of each other. So one light bulb being defective does not necessarily mean the next one be, will be um, defective. We're looking to see what's the probability that exactly one of the light bulbs is defective. So what we want to do is calculate probability that x is equal to 1. Okay. 
So I can plug this back in. This this is quite simple to do with the formula if you know how to use your factorial buttons and everything. And uh, we can go ahead and spit out an answer. So when we plug everything in, we get our, I better put X as one here. We got the formula would be n factorial, which is 10 factorial, all over x factorial, which is 1 factorial. And then we'll have um, n minus x, which will be 10 minus 1 factorial. Make sure you put this in parentheses. And then we get the probability raised to the x power. In this case, it will be raised to the first power. And they get 1 minus 0 0.03 raised to the n minus x, so that will be 10 minus 1. All right, so I'm going to write out uh, what the factorials are when you actually calculate it out. And if you need help with factorials, if you wish to do this by hand, uh, feel free to to email me and we can go over this. So I'm just gonna uh, plug this all out. All right, so I kind of simplified it. So when I divide and raise my numbers to the exponents and do what I have to do, I get an answer of 0 0.228. So that means the probability that exactly one of the LED light bulbs is defective is, uh, is 0.228. All right, so like I said, that's simple to do. Let's uh, look at it on um, StatCrunch. So to do this in StatCrunch, you go to Stat, Calculators, and then Binomial. Here you have to type in your N and your P. It doesn't have that little pi symbol. So just remember that P means probability. Our N is 10, and our probability is 0 0.03. And then we can change this. We want this to be equal to. And we want this to be equal to exactly 1. So we're going to put 1 here. Okay. Hit Compute. And as you can see, I get 0.228. That's what we calculated when we did it by hand. Now, I also have an Excel template, and all you have to do is punch in the numbers, and you'll have some answers populate over here in the yellow. So, let's go ahead and put in our values. The first thing you have to put in is the probability of success. In this case, it was 0 0.03, the probability that is defective. The number of trials is 10. And the number of successes, in this case, we want exactly one. So I'm going to put one. And as you can see, you have all these answers um, to the right. But as you can see, I have different inequality symbols. So, and I'll go over that in, in a bit. But we want to know, we want the probability that x is equal to one. So we want this first one here. And as you can see, I get an answer of 0.228. And that's the same that we get with stack crunch and by hand. So when you do some of these uh, binomial problems, you have to be careful with the wording because that determines what symbol, inequality symbol, that you will use. So if you have at least or no less than or greater than or equal to, you're going to use the greater than or equal symbol. If you have more than or greater than, you just use the greater symbol. You don't do the equal to. If you have fewer than or less than, you use the less than symbol. No more than or at most or less than or equal to, you use the less than or equal to. And of course, the um, exactly or equal or is is the equal sign. Okay. So let's look at this next problem. It's the same problem. So we got the 10 light bulbs. But this time, we want to know the probability that 2 or fewer of the LED light bulbs are defective. So we want this probability here. The probability that X is less than, says 2 
or fewer, less than or equal to two. Okay. Now you can do this by hand, but it's a lot of work because when you think about it, when you do it by hand, two or fewer would be zero, one, or two. So that means you would have to calculate for the probability that x is zero, probability that x is one, plus the probability that x is two. And you would have to plug this in each time into that binomial formula and get an answer. You'll get an answer for this, you'll get an answer for this, get an answer for this, and you add them all up and that would be your answer. So if you, you can do that if you want to do it by hand and you have to do it individually. You got to do it for each probability. But I'm going to go ahead and use StatCrunch. And I know my symbol, so it should be fairly easy. I got the less than or equal to. Okay, so we go to StatCrunch. I still have my numbers in here. And I want less than or equal to 2. And I hit Compute. And I get my answer, 0.9972. I can also do it in sorry, my Excel file. We want 2. This time it's 2 here. Everything else stays the same. And as you can see, my numbers change here. I want the one that has less than or equal to x. And that will be this here. So that answer is 0.99724, which is I just calculated in StatCrunch. So the probability that there are two or fewer uh, light bulbs that are defective is 0.9972. Same scenario, but this time we want to find the probability that three or more of the LED bulbs are defective. So we want the probability, it says three or more. So we want greater than or equal to three. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this in StatCrunch. We're going to change this to greater than or equal to, and I want this to be three this time. I hit compute and I get 0 0.0028. You can just round that. When I do it in my Excel, this time I want 3. Change that to 3 over here. Um, these numbers over here would change and I want greater than or equal to. That's this one here. And I get 0 0.00276. Zero, uh, so you can just round that. So the probability that there are three or more LED light bulbs that are effective is 0 0.0028. Same scenario, but this time we want the probability that more than five of the LED light bulbs are defective. So be careful with this. It says more than five. So we want X greater than five. We don't want it to be equal to 5. We want it to be more than 5. So it's x greater than 5. So going back to StatCrunch, I'm going to change this to greater than, and I'm going to hit 5. And you get this really small number. You get point zero zero. I don't even know how many zeros there are, but you can pretty much say the answer is 0 because it's such a small number. When I do it in my Excel file, I'll put 5 here. And then I want the one that says greater than, that's this here. And it's this answer here. As you can see, it says 1.4 e to the negative 0, 07. What that means is you move your, that's the small numbers. It's the same answer that we got in StatCrunch. So basically what this means is you move your decimal over 7 places to the left. And, and you'll get the long number that we got here in StatCrunch. It, it's the same answer as this. But they just do it a shortcut. Sometimes that happens on your calculator as well. When you uh, do numbers, you'll get that little E symbol. You just move your decimal over. All right, so we can pretty much say this probability is just zero. And the last one is, what's the probability that less than four 
of the LED light bulbs are defective. So less than, we don't want less than or equal to, we want X is less than four. Okay, so let's go back to stack crunch. We want less than, and then we're gonna put four here, hit compute, and I get 0.999. When I do it in Excel, I'm going to put 4 here, and I want less than. The less than is here, and I get the same answer, 0.999. Okay, so like I said, be careful with the wording of the problem, because if you use the wrong inequality symbol, you will get the final answer incorrect. So you can also calculate the mean. Um, and the variance and the standard deviation of binomial distribution. The mean is the total, which is your n, times the probability. And then for the variance and standard deviation, uh, for the variance you take n times probability times 1 minus the probability. And then to find the standard deviation, you just take the square root of that. So don't forget. So but let's go back to this problem. Um, our n is 10, and our probability is 0 0.03. So if we wanted to calculate the mean, we just take 10 times 0 0.03. <coughs> you should get 0 0.3. Okay? So the mean number of defective LED light bulbs would be 0 0.3. Uh, to calculate the standard deviation uh, or the variance, this would be 10 times 0 0.03 times 1 minus uh, 0 0.03. Now, I didn't mean to put this square root here. I don't want that as of yet. Okay. So when we calculate this, we should get point. All right, and then to, you can put a 1 here, 0 0.291, and then to figure out the standard deviation, we're going to take the square root of that. And when I take the square root, I get 0.539. Now, there's no way you can calculate the mean and standard deviation of the binomial distribution in StatCrunch unless you just use their calculator. I do have it set up in my Excel to calculate it for you. Um, if you look down here at the bottom right, what you do is you have to put in your probability and the number of trials, which is N, and it gives you these answers right here. You don't, the number of successes is not included in the calculations. It's just the n and the probability. So if you want to go to uh, Excel, you can do it or you can just do it by hand because it's a simple form.